Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be talking about the skincare products that are my absolute favorites for my own sensitive and dry and mature skin. So over the past three years I have tried out more than a thousand skincare products and most of those have not worked out for me at all. But there are a few that I have been really enthusiastic about and that I do intend to keep using into the future. So I thought that this video would be a good time to talk about those. So for each category of skincare, I have listed all of the products that I've tried and then I have marked the products that I have uh, felt good about and that I will continue to use in bold so you can get a good sense of what I am comparing the products to. And if you're interested in this topic, then you may also want to watch my most recent video, which is my absolute favorite makeup products as well. So first, a little bit of information about me. I'm 59 years old and I do have dry and sensitive skin. And I have uh, never had any kind of cosmetic procedures like injections or surgery, and I don't intend to do that in the future. So I am hoping that some of these skincare products can help me to look a little bit fresher and maybe even a little bit younger. So there are some ingredients that I have found always irritate my skin and that I know are, do have a reputation for being very irritating for people with sensitive skin. So I have chosen to just totally eliminate all products uh, with those ingredients from discussion on this channel. Uh, in terms of natural fragrances, I think that this is a little bit uh, more dependent on uh, individual people's sensitivities. So there are certainly uh, some natural fragrances such is rose geranium oil that I always do seem to be reactive to and that I do seem to have an allergy to. And in other cases, it really depends on the, the amount of the fragrance that's present and also uh, what kind of a preparation it's in. So if it's in an oil-based preparation, sometimes it can be a little bit more uh, tolerable for my skin. So I'm not totally excluding uh, products that have natural fragrances in them from my channel, but I mostly am, especially for skincare, focusing on products that don't have those uh, ingredients in them. And so for each product category, I have listed all of the products that I have tried that are still on the market. And the ones that I have liked, I have put in bold. Uh, and these are products that I uh, would like to continue to use in the future and that I have uh, interest in purchasing again. The ones that are in italic are ones that I have found to be irritating for me. And I have also, uh, in some cases, listed a few products that uh, do have especially problematic ingredients in them. And so when that's the case, I have marked that in terms of the asterisks at the bottom of the page. So let's start out with a category that I think is really important for people who wear makeup and especially for those who wear makeup that has silicone in it. And that is a specific makeup cleansers that are designed to remove uh, more heavy duty makeup such as waterproof products or silicone based products. So the one that I like the most is from Lisa Eldridge and this is called the Skin Enhancing Treatment Cleanser. And this is a product that is sort of on the expensive side uh, because it includes really, really high quality ingredients. So it includes a whole lot of different ingredients, including some natural soap work that apparently is, is uh, s quite expensive compared to many other products. And really all of the products in this are hero ingredients. So I have uh, really liked this. Uh, it does last a lot longer than you would think because you only really need to use what's, what Lisa Eldridge refers to as a blueberry sized uh, amount of this in order to clean your whole face. And I think she is accurate about that. So if that's the case, then a tube like this, which is a little less than $50, uh, will last uh, about six months if you're just using it once a day. And this is my first tube, uh, but I am really, really enthusiastic about this. I put it on my face, and then supposedly you should leave it on for two minutes, which I do. And then when I take it off, I, I really can get it to remove almost anything really easily. And I think that that's really important. And it also feels like a really nice moisturizer on my face. 
The other product that I really do like is from Pharmacy. Now, Pharmacy has uh, several different kinds of cleansing balms. So the one that is the most popular is called Green Clean, and that one has some uh, processed fragrance in it, uh, natural, but still it's been enough to be a little bit irritating to my skin, so I'm not really enthusiastic about that one. And they have one that's called Clearly Clean, which uh, has a, a very clean ingredient list, but which I have found that I really need to do a double cleanse with. So the ones that I have liked the most are the fruit flavored ones. So they have ones that are strawberry and this one is apple and I had some that's peach and some that's blueberry. And what I found with these is that they don't have the essential oils that are irritating for my skin, but that they do uh, wash off really easily. So I don't need to do a second cleanse after I use this. And I found that they remove my makeup almost as well as the Lisa Eldridge one, and that they've been a, a really nice product for me. So if I'm not trying to remove any heavy duty makeup from my skin, then I usually just use a regular water-based type cleanser. And the one that I really like is from Fit Glow, and this is called the Fit Glow Calm Cleansing Milk. And this is a product that has uh, some fermented ingredients in it, and I think that that's one of the reasons that my skin likes it so much and that has done well with it. It does have uh, quite a strong scent, but it's interesting that it is from some of the uh, berry-type ingredients in them that are fermented rather than from an essential oil or a processed fragrance. And I have found that even though it, it seems like it's something that my skin should not be able to tolerate based on uh, the smell of it, that my skin has done really terrifically with it, and that I, I actually do really like this smell a lot. I think it's really a, a, a very pleasant smell in terms of like the, the berry type flavor to it. So I feel really good about this. I uh, don't use it every day, but I do think that uh, it's been really good for my skin when I have used it, and I, I think it, my skin does fine with it even if I do use it every day. Another cleanser that I have really liked is the Mad Hippie Cream Cleanser, and this is a product that it seems to be really gentle to me and that my skin has done well with. All of these are cleansers that are really cream-based. They don't have a lot of uh, foaming type agents in it because my skin is really delicate and seems to do better if I just use like a creamy type of a product on it. I did uh, have someone tell me that they did react to this product, so I'm not saying that it would be appropriate for everyone, but I think that for me it's been really good. So in general, I haven't had much luck with the Aveda skincare products, with this one exception, which is called the Aveda Botanical Kinetics All Sensitive Cleanser, which is a very creamy cleanser that seems really uh, clean to me, and it, my skin seems to have done really well with this one. And this one seems to be especially creamy, so I have used this especially during the winter months. Now another company that is sold in health food stores and that I purchased from their website is Evan Healy and although a lot of their products including some of their cleansing milks do contain essential oils or other issue, other types of ingredients that are problematic for me, they do have one that is called the Simply Basic Cleansing Milk that I think has been really nice for me. And then for the summer months I really do like this uh, Outset gentle micellar antioxidant cleanser. So this one does have a little bit of foaming to it, and I could use it during the winter, but I think that especially for the summer months when my face is a little bit on the sweaty side and it's a little less dry than it is now, this has been a very nice product for me. Now I have not found that my skin does all that well with uh, either exfoliants that are chemically based or exfoliants that are physically based, uh, especially if I use them too often or if they're too strong. So I do use these products on occasion, but more like once a week or so. And I, I also do use a kind of a rough washcloth, so maybe that is helpful as well in terms of helping to exfoliate my face. But in any case, the products that I have kind of liked, uh, one is from Han, and this is a called the Skin refining serum. So this has some lactic acids in it, but it also has some skincare ingredients in it. And I feel like my face does really like this product. I'm not sure that this is going to be on the market forever. It seems to be marked down on their uh, website. And I, I think that both this and their, their oil, uh, they're both really, really good products. And so I'm feeling a little bit sad that they haven't been able to uh, get a lot of attention for them so far. 
Now the Outset is one of my favorite brands. It's this is Scarlett Johansson's brand. And the, the product that they have that's exfoliating is called the Exfoliating Caffeine Micro Polish. So this is a physical exfoliant. And it has very small particles of exfoliants in them that are supposed to be more spherical shaped, so they're a little bit less irritating. And my skin seems to like uh, pretty much all the products from the outset, and this is one of those that I have really enjoyed as well. So now let's talk about moisturizers, which is probably the most important skincare product for me. And I will talk about different categories of moisturizers and pick out the ones that I have done well with. So the first one is moisturizers that are really uh, more on the oil-free side and that I have found to work well as a primer uh, underneath foundation or underneath other kinds of makeup products. So what I tend to do, especially in the winter months, is to get up and to put on a moisturizer that has some cream in it, uh, some, some uh, oil in it. But then uh, later on, after my skin kind of absorbs all that, sometimes I will put on another moisturizer that is sort of designed to use as a primer and that will have things like a squalane or uh, sodium hyaluronate in it. So for instance, one of these products that I've really liked is the Merit Great Skin Instant Glow Serum. So this one, you just shake it up a bit. It's like a liquid and then uh, put a little squirt on your hand and then just kind of pat it into the face. And I found that this product creates kind of a sticky feeling on my skin that serves actually as a, a nice priming uh, product and that my skin does feel uh, hydrated, although not greasy. And then a new product that I have also really liked is the Jones Road Oil-Free Moisturizer. And this was just released a, a few months ago, and I really like this one because it's a cream form, but it doesn't have the oil in it. And I think, again, it's serving very similarly to the Merit product in terms of serving as a nice base for makeup. So even though I think this one may be being promoted primarily for people with a skin that's a little bit more oily than mine, I have found this to be a really good uh, primer for uh, makeup products or if I just want to uh, have a, a skin that doesn't look greasy and that looks kind of on the natural side during the day. Another product that I have used many, many times is the Honest Hydrogel Cream. And this one is uh, very similar to the Jones Road Cream, I think, except that it comes in this jar. So that is a little bit um, less uh, appealing to me because I have to uh, either wash my hands before I use it or I need to um, use some kind of a spatula to get it out of the container. So that is uh, a little bit uh, more annoying to me, especially in the morning. But I do think that it's been a very nice product for me and that uh, it's, it's certainly a good price. And I think that in general, honest skincare, it tends to be really good. And now let's move on to moisturizers that do have some oil in them, but that are appropriate nevertheless for day use. So I found that most of these, if I put them on my face, and my face is really dry even this summer, uh, that if I put these on my face and then I wait a little bit of time and then I, I can put makeup over the top of them and they work fairly well. I don't think that they're as good of a primer for makeup as some of the other products, but they do have uh, the potential to be worn during the day with or without makeup. So the first one is again from uh, my, the outset, which is one of my favorite companies. And this is called the Nourishing Squalane Daily Moisturizer. And I have used uh, several bottles of this, so I am really enthusiastic about it. Another product that I really liked is from Typology. And this is called the Typology Nourishing Moisturizer. And it includes a, uh, some plum kernel oil in it and hyaluronic acid and uh, some other really good quality ingredients in it. So I have really uh, enjoyed using this one quite a lot. Typology makes a couple of other moisturizers that I haven't liked as much. But this one is very nice and I think it's fairly reasonably priced. It does come in this tube, which I, I guess is okay. I don't have a real problem with that. I kind of prefer a pump, but the tube is not too bad also. And then a product that is fairly similar to the Typology product is this uh, Beauty Counter Countermatch Adaptive Moisture Lotion. Again, this has the plum kernel in it. It doesn't have any scent. It doesn't have any uh, problematic ingredients as far as I'm concerned. And I do think it does a, a really good job of moisturizing my face with uh, ingredients like squalane and sodium hyaluronate. 
And then my favorite moisturizer from Honest Beauty is the Honest Everyday Radiance Plus C moisturizer. So this one has niacinamide, squalane, uh, several different kinds of, of hyaluronic acid, and a fermented ingredient, Saccharomyces. And I feel like uh, the Honest products across the board in the skincare category are really, really quite good and generally very reasonably priced. And I think that that is especially the case with this particular moisturizer. And now let's talk about a few lighter night creams that I tend to use more in the summer months. Uh, one of them is from Beauty Counter. It's also from that Counter Match line. And it is called the Recovery Sleeping Cream. So this is very similar to the day cream with the, uh, the smell of the almonds, which is from the plum kernel oil. And I have found this to be a very nice cream. So the unfortunate thing about this is that it is in this weird container where it has this button here, and then the product comes out through this hole. So I find that I kind of have to like put my hand like this, and then uh, it, the product comes out like this, and sometimes it squirts like all over the bathroom and then I have to take it up like this. So it is a kind of hygienic, so that part is good, but it also is a little bit of a problem too. A uh, little bit annoying to have to use, and I've heard that it also, it can malfunction from time to time. And there isn't any way to open this, at least the not that I've found. So I would prefer this be in a different container, but I really like the product enough that I still might buy another container of it just because I, I think it's been really good for my skin. Now, some of the products that I have been talking about have had some fermented ingredients in them, like that Honest product. But I have found that uh, in terms of really uh, creating a, a good boost for my microbiome, uh, there's a couple of Fit Glow products that have been really, really good for me. So uh, they're very similar to that cleanser, but one of them is the Fit Glow Cloud Comfort Cream, which is a lighter cream. And then there is one that is called the uh, Vita Rich Cream, which has uh, some bakuchiol in it, which is a uh, herb that uh, is supposed to be anti-wrinkling or anti-aging. And it also has a, a little bit more uh, oil in it. And I found that both of these have been really, really good for me. Again, they have that same uh, berry type of uh, a scent that's quite strong, but my skin just seems to think this is really terrific. So I do tend to use this not every day, but I, I do tend to use it several times a week, and I think that my skin really benefits from that. And the Fitlow products do tend to be pretty expensive, which is part of why I don't use them uh, every time I moisturize my face. But it is possible to get some good discounts on, on Fitlow products, so I wouldn't necessarily be dissuaded by those higher prices. So now let's talk about the products that I use during the winter months in terms of moisturizers. And it certainly is the case that I can take my regular moisturizers and beef them up somewhat by adding some uh, hydrating serum and by adding some uh, good quality oils to them. But I do think that there are some moisturizers that have worked really, really well for me during the winter as well. And that have made a really big difference in terms of my skin almost seeming like it's not a problem for me in the winter. So one of the ones that I have liked the most is from Beauty Counter again, and this one is called the Countertime Tetra Peptide Supreme Cream. And this is quite expensive. It's almost $100 for this jar. But what I have been doing is that each year I have been buying uh, one of these products generally on sale. Usually you can get like 20 or 30% off during their big sales. And so then it becomes a little bit more reasonable. And it's uh, lasted me uh, in combination with other, using other products uh, for, a, uh, for the whole winter. So I think it's been uh, worth it for me. And this product does include a lot of really heavy duty moisturizers in it. It also includes some bakuchiol and some peptides, and so it's supposed to be anti-aging. And my skin does seem to be really enthusiastic about it, so I think it's been worth that investment. Another product that I think has been really terrific for me during the winter months is from Jones Road, and this is their Miracle Cream. Now, Bobby Brown, who is, uh, I think she's 66 now, and she says she does have very, very dry skin. She created this uh, to serve her own needs, and I think that it has been really a, a surprisingly good product for me. It lists hydrogenated vegetable oil as uh, the main ingredient in this, and at first I really was suspicious about 
that, but I realize that this is a kind of a similar consistency to Crisco. Hopefully they're using uh, oils in this that are a little bit better than the ones that are often used in, in Crisco type products. But I really do feel like even more than the beauty counter cream, when I put this on my skin and then I wake up in the morning, it, it really makes me feel like I just don't even have dry skin anymore. So it's been really terrific for the winter. I have been really surprised because it's not that expensive. This does have some essential oils in it so that uh, may, my skin may not like that so much, but I think that in general, my skin has been doing really well and I haven't uh, seen any irritation from using it. I think it's because it's so oily that the essential oils are not as big of a problem as they are in many products. But if you are reactive to the particular essential oils that are in this product, then this may not be the one for you. But I've been uh, really happy with it, and I use it a lot in the winter now. Now, a product that I think is even more of a solution when I'm really feeling desperate in the winter is the Honest Calm Plus Heal uh, Melting Balm. And this is a product that's more like a balm, uh, but it has a lot of really qu high quality ingredients in it. And I have found that if my skin just really starts to go off the rails and I put this on even for one night, it can help it a lot and it can bring it really back into balance. Now another product, uh, which is uh, just an oil that I think has been really uh, helpful for me during the winter months has been the uh, Marie Veronique Barrier Lipid Complex. Now this is a very expensive skincare product company and I have used a, a number of their products. I'm not sure if most of them are worth it for me, but I do think that this one has been a helpful product during the winter months. And it includes a variety of different kinds of uh, high quality oils in it that I think uh, do make a, a big difference. They tend to be oils that are thicker and that uh, absorb into my skin really well and that are more expensive oils. And now let's talk about eye creams. And I think it's become a little bit fashionable among certain people that are on uh, social media to suggest that you don't really need an eye cream and that you can just use your regular cream all over your whole face. Uh, I almost feel like I am the opposite of that. And that uh, the thing about eye creams is that they tend to not have fragrance in them. They tend to have higher quality ingredients in them. In some cases, they're not all that much more expensive on a per gram basis than regular moisturizers, but they just tend to be more gentle. And sometimes they actually have more actives in them. So I feel like for me, I'm a little bit more inclined to think about using uh, eye creams all over my whole face, maybe with a little bit more oil in them, uh, than I am to say that I don't need an eye cream. And the uh, eye creams that I've really liked are ones that uh, tend to have caffeine in them. They tend to have bakuchi all in them. I do have a lot of issues in my eye area, so I don't mind spending a little bit of extra money for products that I am using in that area. Uh, the one product that I have really liked, uh, maybe the most, is from Alpine Beauty. And this is called the Plant Genius uh, Line Filling Eye Balm. And this one does have both caffeine and bakuchi all in it. It doesn't have anything in it that's been irritating for my eyes. It's a more of a balm type consistency, so it's a little bit on the greasy and moisturizing side, so I tend to use this one during the uh, evening hours. And that one does say that it includes some peptides and some ceramides in it, so I think that that's part of why I've liked it as well. And then for day use, I tend to uh, use a, a lighter eye cream on my eye area so that I can put on uh, face pencils or uh, other kinds of concealers without it being really greasy so that they will stay in place. And uh, the Jones Road eye cream was made specifically for use with their face pencils, and I think it's worked really, really well for that. So this is a very light product, but I think it's, it's not very greasy at all. Uh, but I do think it does a nice job uh, under makeup during the day. But really, I think that if you look at this list, there's a whole bunch of eye creams here that I have felt enthusiastic about and that I have used up. I even uh, found a Chanel eye cream that I have really liked. It's hard for me to say for sure without doing a definite test uh, whether or not some of these are better than others, but there certainly are a lot of products here that I feel enthusiastic about and in some cases I, that I do use on my whole face. 
So next I'm going to talk about facial oils. And I think that facial oils have been really important for me and that uh, especially some of the really, really high quality oils seem to work really, really well for my skin. So in some cases I put them directly on my skin, but I'm a little bit more inclined to mix them with either a moisturizer to give it a little bit more of a boost or with a hyaluronic acid type serum, a, moist, a hydrating serum. And I feel like if I mix those two things together, Together, that my skin uh, really has a, a good combination of all the ingredients that it needs in order to start to not uh, be so dry. So really the, the best way as far as I'm concerned to you incorporate oils into my skincare routine has been to purchase just plain oils, uh, organic ones, from a uh, or, uh, essential oil company. So the essential oil company that I have used is Eden Botanicals and what I have found is that uh, the, the oils that I purchase from them tend to be uh, about uh, one-fourth to one-fifth as much as if I bought them from some company uh, in combination on uh, Credo or Sephora or something like that. So the discount is such a large amount that it's kind of hard to uh, justify spending a whole lot of money on oils that are not going to be as high quality. Uh, the ones from uh, uh, Eden Botanicals come in these uh, dark jars, so they, they stay fresh for a while. So for instance, this one that I have here, it's a raspberry seed oil, and this one is a marula oil. And I think that both of those have been really terrific for me. Uh, some of the other ones that they have on the Eden Botanicals website uh, are, that I have enjoyed are the jojoba oil, uh, plum kernel oil, uh, pomegranate seed oil, prickly pear oil, um, and sandalwood nut, and baobab. So, and then they have some others as well, including some that are not uh, quite as expensive, like the sunflower seed oil. So, I, as I said, I think that the, um, the Marie Veronique oil has done really, really well for me, and so I, I did buy another bottle of that on sale, but I think it really makes much more sense to buy these oils individually and then mix up a concoction that works uh, really well for your skin, and to, to try different kinds of oils and see which ones you, you really like. Now, one oil that they don't list on Eden Botanicals and that I've mostly seen from skincare type companies is squalane oil. So, for instance, I have been uh, incorporating this product from Indy Lee into my uh, skincare routine. This is called the squalane facial oil, and uh, it's uh, not super expensive. This one from Indy Lee is derived from olives. And there's also one that uh, I am interested in trying soon that's from Typology, which is a company that I really like in general. And that one is from Olives also. Now, in most cases, when companies are selling squalane oil, though, or incorporating it into their products, uh, I think it is supposed to be from bioengineered microbes that are fermenting things like sugarcane. And whether or not that matters is a, a matter of opinion, I think. I think that I might uh, slightly intuitively prefer the one that's from the olives, but uh, that may be a bit more expensive as well. But in any case, I do find that squalane seems to work really, really well for my skin. It seems to absorb really quickly and that my skin seems to be in better shape. So that one does seem to be worthwhile uh, incorporating whatever the original source is. Another oil that I have really enjoyed using on my face is from uh, The Outset, which is called The Outset Ultra Light Oil. So this is a, a clear oil with uh, no fragrance at all in it, so it really smells like nothing. And it uh, contains caprylic, squalane, jojoba, other oils. And one thing to know about the outset is that it does not include any bioengineered uh, squalane or sodium hyaluride in it. So uh, that is one reason why it's slightly more expensive, but I think this is a fairly okay deal and I have uh, kind of enjoyed using this particular oil. Another oil that I have really kind of liked is this typology oil. So this one has bakuchio and hazelnut oil and some caprylic in it. And I think it's probably good for my skin to get some bakuchiol into it. Uh, the bakuchiol is supposed to be like a natural retinol type of ingredient that is supposed to target both acne and also uh, wrinkles in the, without causing any sun irritation or just general irritation. And my skin seems to do fine with bakuchiol. 
And this hazelnut oil has been really uh, a very nice oil. Again, it's supposed to be for skin that is more on the oily side, but I think that my skin, in combination with other products that I'm putting on it, my skin really does seem to like it. Another product from Typology that I have really liked is called the uh, Typology Botanical Blend with No Pall. So this is a uh, oil that contains squalene and prickly pear and hibiscus. So those are pretty high quality oils, especially the prickly pear. And then it also includes what they say are prickly pear native cells, which are supposed to be anti-aging. Uh, this does include some lavender oil and some helichrysum oil in it. So it uh, may be irritating for some people, but I seem to be able to tolerate those oils okay. EWG doesn't seem to find those to be problematic. So in general, I think this has been a nice product for me. I'm not sure that it would work for everyone in terms of not being irritating, but I think that uh, my skin does seem to like this particular product, and um, I think it's possible it may be having some kind of an anti-aging effect. And then Anne Marie is a company that has a quite expensive uh, botanical uh, all organic uh, products that are, uh, I think, have do have very high quality ingredients, but I don't know that their formulations have been all that successful for me. But I do really like this anti-aging facial oil, especially in terms of the smell. I think that the smell of this seems like something that my really makes me feel like it's almost like a nutrition for my skin. So uh, once in a while, you know, a couple times a week, I will put a little bit of this on in combination with my other skincare, and I think it's been very nice. And this one has uh, chia seed, goji berry, broccoli, and jojoba oil, and then a whole bunch of uh, uh, extracts in it uh, without there being essential oils. And I don't think it's been irritating at all. And of uh, scented things that I have tried, this one has been really terrific. So now let's talk about hydrating serums. Uh, and these are serums that include basically sodium hyaluronate in them with a, a number of other types of uh, ingredients that can be good for the skin that's uh, deficient in uh, water, basically. And the one that I have actually liked the most, I think, and that also has been uh, relatively inexpensive is the Honest Stay Hydrated Hyaluronic Acid plus NMF serum. So the NMF is Natural Moisturizing Factor. And I think that this has been really good for my skin. I've, I've used several bottles of this so far, and I feel like uh, the more that I put on my skin, the better my skin does. Uh, it's a little bit like the Honest Hydrogel Cream, but I think it's much, much better for my skin in general. And I generally mix it with some moisturizer or sometimes I'll put it on underneath the moisturizer. Now this it does have, I think, bioengineered uh, sodium hyaluronate in it, so some people may be concerned about that. Uh, but I, I feel like my skin has really liked it. And then there's a couple of more products that have uh, the hydrating elements to them, but that also have some additional ingredients. So one of these is the Alpine Beauty Wild Nettle Niacinamide Firming Serum. Uh, so I mostly think of this as a uh, hyaluronic acid type hydrating serum, but it does have some uh, ingredients in it that are supposed to be anti-aging as well. And it's a little more expensive, but maybe because of the anti-aging elements to it, it might be worth it. And then another product that I've used up uh, a whole bottle of this, I might have another bottle around that I'm going to open fairly soon, is the Outset Firming Collagen Serum, which again is a little more expensive than, say, the Honest Beauty one. Uh, it, this one does have the botanical alternatives to hyaluronic acid, so it uh, conceivably could be uh, more appealing to people that are concerned about that. And it does have some botanical anti-aging ingredients in it that also could be helpful. So now let's talk about products that are supposed to be helpful with signs of aging. And the first product is a very, very expensive product that I decided to give a try to. This is the Augustinus Botter, the Rich Cream. So uh, last spring, I uh, purchased a, a set of this uh, 
to just to give it a try. Uh, this is by far the most expensive beauty product that I have purchased. Uh, it Usually my rule is that I don't spend more than $100 on a particular product. In this case, I spent considerably more for this just to try to give it a, a good fair tryout. So what I have been doing is putting this on one side of my face and then using just all the same rest of the skincare on my whole on, on both sides of my face to try to see if it makes a difference. So you can take a look at uh, all of my videos uh, since uh, last spring uh, to see if you think that there's a difference in terms of how the different sides of my face are looking and whether or not it's made a difference. I think that it actually has made a bit of a difference and that I really need to do a video on this and then maybe start trying using this on both sides of my face. Um, this is supposed to have a proprietary peptide in it. And the peptide is supposed to be an anti-aging peptide. So Augustinus Botter is a, uh, a university professor and a medical doctor in Germany. And he has a, supposedly came up with a treatment for burns that was supposed to be uh, really revolutionary, but he couldn't get it to go off the ground in terms of people funding it because people, burn victims, tend to be in third world countries where uh, there's no money to be made from it. So he decided to launch this product instead, uh, which is supposed to be a uh, a, a, maybe similar to that burn cream, I'm not sure, that is uh, supposed to help with uh, anti-aging type of thing. So this is a product that is really used very frequently by celebrities who are concerned about aging issues. And I feel like uh, the, the credibility of this particular professor and the stories that I had seen made it seem like it was worthwhile. And I do I do, again, think that it's made a difference. I think that it might be the case that there are other products with peptides on the market that might be just as uh, helpful. So I would be interested in trying some of those. But so far, I think that uh, this has been a product that I've been fairly happy with. And I did buy some additional product at the most recent Sephora sale. Now, one of the first products that I tried that I thought was really good for my skin is the Bare Mineral Skin Longevity Long Life Herb Serum. And this has some fermented ingredients in it. It also has a plant that is supposed to be good for the skin barrier and for uh, aging issues. Uh, and then it also has uh, vitamin C and niacinamide and squalane in it. And the idea is that it's supposed to help with the skin barrier. And so I think that it's been uh, quite good for me. Now it does have some fragrance in it, and I think that that part is bad, but I think that overall, at least for me, uh, the, the benefits of this product have outweighed the fact that it has those fragrance ingredients in it. So I tend to use this uh, almost every day, just a little squirt of it, and I think it has been helpful for my skin. I would like it if I could get an unscented version of it, uh, and there really are no other bare minerals products that I've been all that enthusiastic about, but this one I have liked enough to keep buying the product on sale and to keep using it. And then another anti-aging product that I have just been using for maybe a month or so is the Necessaire Nex Serum, uh, which is supposed to have a number of different peptides in it. And I have had really good luck with uh, the Necessaire products. Now, almost all of their products are body care products. And they don't have any face products, and this is the, the closest that they've gotten to the face. And I've been really impressed with this. So what I tend to do is just to mix this with some kind of an oil, because it, it tends to be more like a hyaluronic type serum. But I think that this has been, a, a, it's felt really good to me, whether or not it's really made a difference with my neck, I'm not sure. But I certainly feel like it's very, very high quality skincare, and I am kind of looking forward to the idea of Necessaire introducing some some, some facial skin care because I think that they are doing a good job pretty much across the board with the products that they have released. Now a lot of people have asked me over the past year uh, how I can keep my skin in good shape when it is so sensitive and when I am trying all these products. And I think that the answer pretty much across the board is to focus on the microbiome for me. So what I find is that if my skin gets messed up and that I need to bring it back into balance, then I really do need to focus on both supplementing with fermented type products and also with starting out with sort of a clean slate type of an issue. 
So for instance, one of the products that I use for this is uh, this Briotex uh, Topical Skin Spray. This is almost ex basically exactly like the um, Tower 28 product. Uh, it's like an SOS type of a name. So these pro products have a hypochlorous acid in them, and I think that what they are doing is that they are kind of uh, wiping out uh, especially the problematic bacteria on the skin and then allowing it to start over. So if you have some kind of an infection uh, that's a low grade but enough to be irritating, then this can be really helpful for that. And the other type of product that I found to be really helpful for that is uh, ozonated oil. So I usually use ozonated coconut oil, but you can use other kinds of ozonated oils as well. And the product company that I buy these from is a company called Pure O3. And when I put this on my skin, I do think that it uh, does a, a really good job of bringing my skin back into balance uh, really immediately. And then I can follow it with some nourishing things and some things with some fermented ingredients in them, or sometimes even I'll put yogurt on my skin. So uh, really, it's been focusing on the microbiome that has made a big difference for me and that has allowed me to have this channel because otherwise my skin would be in a pretty big mess. Now, another product category that a lot of people uh, seem to find to be very helpful for them are vitamin C uh, products. And I have not yet found that I've had uh, much obvious success with vitamin C. And I think that part of that is that uh, there's there's basically two groups of vitamin C types out there. One is ascorbic acid, and that is known to be more um, effective. Uh, so most of the studies that have been done on vitamin C uh, tend to suggest that ascorbic acid is much more effective than the other forms, but it's also less stable, so it needs to be in a particular type of a container and to not uh, have, and to have a short expiration date. And it also tends to be much more irritating. And so when I've used ascorbic acid, I have found that it has been quite irritating for me. And so I haven't been motivated to stay with that. Now I have tried some other types of uh, vitamin C and I am not noticed that they make a big difference for me. But then again, my skin seems to not really have the issues like dark spots or dullness that vitamin C would need to be countering. And I do have a lot do have a lot of antioxidants in my diet, so that might be helpful for that as well. So in any case, I've tried uh, some different uh, serums and I haven't felt the real need to continue with those. There are a couple of moisturizers that have vitamin C in them that I have been liking. Uh, one of those is from Mad Hippie, and that one has uh, three different types of vitamin C, although no ascorbic acid in it. Uh, it does have a, a little bit of jasmine extract in it, so some people could be irritated by that. But I feel like my skin did really well with that, and that that was another uh, wintertime moisturizer that uh, I feel like my skin uh, really benefited from and that I might try buying again. And then I talked before about the Honest Everyday Radiance Plus C Moisturizer, which is a day moisturizer. And my skin uh, really did very, very well with that product, but I am suspicious that the vitamin C had anything to do with that. So now let's talk about uh, lip moisturizers. And the one that I've been liking the most that's still on the market is the Evan Healy Whipped Shea Butter Stick. So this has uh, some really high quality oils in it and I feel like it's been uh, very, very good for my lips. And even if I'm only using this and not using any other products, I feel like my lips have been in pretty good shape. The other lip balm that's in a stick that I really like is the one from RMS. So I talked in my makeup video about these tinted daily lip balms and how much I like these. So this is the one that does not have any color in it, and I think that this has been very nice as well. It works actually as a, a decent primer under matte lipstick, and it also is a very nice general moisturizer. Now in terms of lip treatments, I'm not sure that I've found any lip treatments that I think are really that much better than just using the Evan Healy or the RMS products. But uh, I do have a couple of products that I have been liking enough that I have been using them uh, on a regular basis before going to bed. So one of them is the Pharmacy Lip Smoothie Apple. 
And this supposedly has vitamin C and peptides in it. It, it has been moisturizing for me. Usually I don't like things that are flavored, uh, but this one actually, the natural flavor in that uh, whatever it is seems to taste fine to me and I've used up almost the whole container so I might buy another one of these. So now let's talk about body products and in particular let's start out with hand creams. So last winter I did a whole video on hand creams so I tried out a whole bunch of different products and I found that the one that I liked the most was from Honest. Uh, so this one seems to me to be very very similar to the Lox L'Occitane, I think is how it's pronounced, uh, product uh, that is very very popular but that also includes synthetic fragrance and natural fragrance and that did uh, irritate my hands and uh, had an offensive scent as far as I was concerned. So in terms of the other ingredients, I think that this, uh, these Honest products have been really, really good. They have the shea butter in them in a fair amount of quantity. And I feel like I can put these on my hands and that they put my, make my hands in much better shape uh, without being greasy. So I put this on a number of times throughout the day. It doesn't have any unscented version, but uh, all three of the versions uh, seem to be really mild and uh, I've been able to tolerate them fine, both in terms of the scent and also in terms of my hands doing well with them. Now, very often when I use that product, I do add a little bit of extra oil to it. So I think that any really good high quality oil would be uh, helpful for that. But uh, the ones that I've been just happening to use, because I happen to have some of them, uh, are these two products from Bybee. So the first one is a Strawberry Booster, which is a product that's made from um, strawberry seed oil. And I think that this is a nice, thick oil that uh, uh, provides a, a lot of nice moisture to my face, uh, hands, especially when I mix it with this hand cream. And it feels really good, and my skin seems to react really well to it. I also can use this on my face, but I think it works a lot better on my hands than on my face. And then the other product that I have been often mixing into the uh, hand cream or else using just on its own sometimes is called uh, the Bybee Bakuchiol Booster. Now this is really just a squalane oil, but it also has some Bakuchiol in it. And I think that any squalane oil would work really well on my hands. It absorbs really fast so that my skin doesn't feel greasy when I'm using uh, the computer or the phone. Uh, but I, I think that this one, because it has Bakuchiol in it, that's probably a good thing because hands do show signs of aging. And so I think if I can get a little bit of Bakuchiol in this, that might be good for my hands as well. Now, my, especially during the winter when I'm using a lot of hand cream, I have found that I really need to exfoliate my hands or else they tend to crack and uh, get really dry and uh, the moisture doesn't get absorbed into them because they kind of have a layer of wax and a layer of uh, dead skin cells on them. So I usually use a physical exfoliant on them, but I have recently been just experimenting with using some retinol cream on them because I happen to have this retinol cream and I don't feel comfortable using retinol on my face. My face does always get irritated and I also don't really want my skin to become more sensitive sensitive to the sun. So I haven't moved into uh, trying to force my skin to have, on my face to have retinol, but I think that on my hands that this has worked really, really well. And so far, after if I just use this, you know, even just a couple times a week, uh, mixed into uh, the, the regular hand cream or put right on, on my hand, and particularly on my thumbs, which tend to crack a lot, uh, that this has been a, a very good product and that I haven't needed to be exfoliating as much. And I'm not too concerned in the winter about my hands getting too much sun because it is uh, there. I'm always wearing gloves when I'm outside. So I think that uh, for, the, for the summer months, I would be less comfortable with this. But I think for the winter months, this has been a really good thing for me so far. And then I talked about how this Honest Calm Plus Heal Melting Balm is helpful for my face when I'm really uh, in bad shape during the winter months. And I think it's also been a very good thing for my hands. So uh, this is a, a much thicker and balmier type product. And so I usually will put this on at night and my hands do seem to benefit from that a lot. Now in terms of body moisturizers, one thing that I have done 
a lot is to use the face moisturizers that I'm not able to use on my face because they've been too irritating and to use those on my body. So this can include creams or oils and uh, that has worked really well. So I haven't tried out all that many body moisturizers, but I have come up with a few that I really, really like. And these are products that I mostly use during the winter months. I feel like during the summer months, my skin is in pretty good shape and I haven't needed to use a lot of lotions on it. But during the winter months, I do definitely think that it helps to use some good moisturizers. And so what I have found is that for me, most moisturizers really are not doing very much. And that what I really need is to have a good bit of sodium hyaluronate, which is a hydrator, as well as a good bit of uh, really high quality oils. So we're talking about shea butter or oils that are even better than that. And then if I have a good mix like that, that uh, my skin does pretty well and I don't really even need to be putting that much moisturizer on it. Whereas most of the moisturizers that are on the market, they really don't seem to be helping at all. So the product that I have been really enthusiastic about and that I think has been kind of revolutionary for me is the Necessaire Body Serum. And again, I, there are a lot of Necessaire products that I do really like, but I think this one is by far my favorite. And what I have found is that if I mix this into any kind of moisturizer, especially one that is uh, pretty high, high quality oils uh, in the regular moisturizer, that my skin does much, much better. So although there are people that seem to suggest that you don't really need sodium hyaluronate and that you can do fine with uh, glycerin, I have not found that to be the case. Case at all. I feel like my skin just loves this particular product and that there really are not that many other moisturizers on the market that are you know, anywhere, you know, any kind of, at any price really, not even just at a reasonable price, but at any price, that I really feel like uh, have this type of ingredient in them. So this has been a really terrific thing for me. I also really like uh, Necessaire's body oil. So this has a lot of really good high quality ingredients in it. Uh, sweet almond oil, tamanu oil, hazelnut oil, macadamia nut oil, and marula oil are the top ingredients. And I think all of these have been terrific. And the price is uh, somewhat high, but it's a pretty large container. And I feel like it's really not that expensive considering how qu high quality the oils are. And so I uh, have used up uh, some of this bottle last year and I think that I will buy another bottle this year because I've been uh, kind of impressed with the, the quality of this uh, for the price. Now, in terms of creams, uh, what I have found is that uh, if I have a whipped shea butter by itself, that that's a little bit too much, but that if I mix in some of this oil and some of this body serum and uh, with the whipped shea butter, that it's been a, a really good mixture for me. So for instance, this whipped shea butter product is from Evan Healy and it is called Whipped Neroli Frankincense Body Butter. So it has uh, all the organic ingredients in it and I think that it's been the smell is really nice as far as I, uh, as far as my own nose goes. And I think that if I, I mix this with the other products that I don't need to use a whole lot of it. Uh, the one thing about these whipped shea butters is that they tend to only last for six months or certainly not a full year. Uh, they tend to turn into more of like a balm. So I think that it's important to uh, use fresher ones if you want a really high quality experience. But in any case, I, I really do like this. Um, Evan Healy one, and there's one that I bought from 100% Pure that I thought was okay. So you may be able to find other products as well, but I think this one has been very nice. One more product that I have kind of liked, especially in terms of the smell, but also in terms of the performance has been the Jones Road Hippie Stick. So this is like a balm type product. And I think that this works particularly well for me on uh, like knees or elbows, or sometimes I will even use it on my hands. It does have some essential oils in it. So it has spearmint and lavender and orange oil. And not everyone can tolerate those oils, but I feel like for me on my body, um, this has actually been okay. And I have used uh, up almost this whole stick and I might buy another one this year. I, I kind of have gotten enough use out of this that I can recommend it. So now let's talk about hair. 
And I have found over just the past six months or so that uh, I've really had a, a revolution in terms of how well my hair behaves by doing just one thing. And that is by using uh, fairly high quality oils uh, on my hair before shampooing. So I will take some uh, quality oils and uh, just take like a between, between like a teaspoon and a tablespoonful and just rub it on my hair and then leave it on there for at least uh, half an hour or maybe longer. And then rinse it out in the shower uh, with shampoo and then uh, just use regular products after that. And I think that compared to every single hair product that I have ever used, that has been really terrific for me. So far, mostly what I've been doing is using the products that have not worked on my face or not worked on my body or that I haven't really enjoyed using that much and putting them on my hair. And I think that really any kind of oil, uh, any kind of fairly high quality oil uh, has worked really well on my hair. So for instance, this RMS product, it's called the Beauty Body Oil. I thought that maybe I would use this on my body, but I find that I I'm do better with creams and lotions. But this one, uh, has uh, some really high quality oils in it and so when I put this on my hair I think that uh, my hair has been in such better shape. So I think that just as my whole body is short on uh, oil that and needs a lot of moisturizing uh, my hair seems to be that as well. So I've been uh, feeling like I can grow my hair a little bit longer. It's still very short but it's at least more like one length and it seems to be in pretty good shape so I'm going to see maybe if I can grow it a little bit longer. Now I think eventually when I use up all of the products that I have that the uh, Eden Botanicals uh, carry oils will be a, a really good thing for my hair. So the, ha the hair oils that are considered to be the, the most popular tend to be um, argan oil and jojoba oil. And sometimes people put some prickly pear oil in it. That's pretty expensive, but it would be just an addition to some of the other oils. But I really think that any kind of oil can be a good thing for my hair. So I want to continue to try a few more of the treatment type products from different companies, but so far the oil product has just been revolutionary for me. And I also have had a real challenge in terms of finding shampoos that I have liked. So most shampoos do have synthetic fragrance in them, and that is something that I always do avoid. Uh, as other shampoos have ingredients in them that I consider to be problematic and that may or may not be bad for my hair or my scalp, but they definitely do seem to be bad for my body when I rinse it off. So I have uh, looked uh, long and hard to find products that either don't have any scent to them or that have uh, scents that are uh, much more mild and naturally based. So I have found a few products that I've been happy with and I have mostly been rotating them so I'm not sure which ones are the best but I'll talk about the ones that I've tried. The product that I think is a nice all-purpose uh, shampoo for that really anyone in the household can use are the Honest uh, Shampoo and Body Wash and then the Honest Conditioner. So this is an unscented version. And I think that this has actually been really nice for my hair. They're, they're not that expensive, and I think that they have worked as well for me as some of the products that are much, much more expensive. And then the Necessaire, which is a brand that I really like across the board, makes a shampoo and conditioner that I think has also been really good for me. Uh, it seems to be uh, fairly gentle and appropriate for my own mature and dry hair. And uh, this version uh, do, is unscented, but they do have a scented version as well. And I think that especially for people like me that have very dry hair and uh, mature hair, that this InnerSense product seems to me to be very gentle. Uh, this is the Hydrating Cream Hair Bath and the Hydrating uh, Conditioner. And I have just used these uh, sample bottles so far, but I liked it enough that I did buy uh, some new large bottles, so I'm going to give those a try. And the InnerSense product does list some um, in fragrance type ingredients, natural fragrance ingredients, uh, but they must not be using very much of those because I have found them to be fine for me and it hardly has any scent as all, at all, as far as I can tell. And then the most recent product that I have been trying out in terms of hair products 
are the Lola V products. Now this is Jennifer Aniston's hairline and it has just started selling at Credo, so I decided to give their uh, trial set a try. And I was kind of um, hesitant about this because they only are offering one kind of shampoo and one kind of conditioner, so I felt like it was probably not necessarily going to be that appropriate for my own hair. It's supposed to be appropriate for all different kinds of hair, but I was really kind of surprised at how well my hair has liked this product. And I think that uh, my guess with regard to this is because uh, unlike most shampoos, this one actually includes uh, several fermented ingredients in each product. And I think that in general, my skin has really liked fermented ingredients and I'm kind of surprised, but, but maybe not surprised. Uh, but uh, to find that maybe my hair is really, uh, does well with fermented ingredients also. So in terms of styling products, I also have been trying the Lola V Perfecting Leave-In and the per, uh, Lola V Glossing Detangler. So these are products that were their, their initial releases at this company from Jennifer Aniston. And then the shampoo and the conditioner came later. And I actually am really impressed with these products. I think that they have been really good for my hair and really good at protecting my hair from stress when it has been uh, on the wet side. And in terms of styling products, I've tried a bunch of things, but the thing that I really kind of like is the InnerSense Inner Peace Whipped Cream Texturizer. I think that this has a basically no smell that I can detect, even though it does have some fragrance ingredients in it. And I think it's been really good for my fine hair in terms of giving it a little more texture. So in terms of cleansing my body, I have found that just regular uh, bath soaps uh, made of organic ingredients have worked much better for me than any kind of body wash. The body washes tend to be irritating to my skin and also drying to my skin. Uh, for a long time, I was using products from a company called Just So, which is out of business then I started using products from a company called Canary Whiskers and that one is out of business too. So I have a few alternatives that I found after a good bit of search that have worked well for me. Uh, one of them is called uh, Whispering Willow, and so they make a variety of different soaps. And I think this one is nice in terms of the size, uh, in terms of the ingredients. They have a variety of products, including some with scents and some without scents. And this has been really good. So what I'm looking for is all ing organic ingredients, preferably organic uh, essential oils, if they're going to use essential oils. And I think that this has been uh, the same quality that I've been used to in my other products that I used in the past. There's another company that's called Chagrin Valley, which makes a pretty wide variety of products. And they make also things like shampoo bars, and I think that these have been nice as well. And then a brand that I just started using just a couple of days ago is from a company called Sweet Ar Harvest Farms. And uh, I really like this product, and I think it's uh, supposed to be uh, even more sort of authentic and high quality than some of these other brands. Uh, the, the issue that I have with this is that this is a tremendously large bar, and I find this to be really too big for me. And the shower, and then I have these sample bars, which I don't think are going to last very long. But I do like these soaps a lot, and so I'm going to experiment with this some more as well. And in terms of hand soaps that I would use at the sink, uh, the one that I have been using for, for quite a, a few years now is the Dr. Bronner's Organic Sugar Soap. Now, I like this much better than the regular Dr. Bronner's soap. I think it's much more moisturizing and pleasant to use. It comes in a few different flavors as well as an unscented version. And I think this has been a, a very nice product for me, and it is all organic ingredients, obviously. And then we can talk briefly about a few other personal care products. I have been using uh, Dr. Bronner's uh, toothpaste for quite a few years now that comes in uh, several different flavors and I feel like it's been really good for my teeth. My teeth are really doing quite well also even though I uh, don't necessarily go to the dentist very often. When I do go my teeth seem to be in very good shape so I'm happy with this. It doesn't have fluoride in it. It doesn't have really any ingredients that are too scratchy in it. It's just kind of a basic toothpaste. And I have been much happier with this than the other natural or other toothpaste that I can find. A lot of toothpastes have very bad ingredients in them, so it's really important to find something good. In terms of deodorant, I feel 
really, really enthusiastic about uh, two products that have uh, AHAs in them rather than other kinds of uh, deodorizing things. Uh, one is the Necessaire deodorant gel, and then the other one is from Kosas Sport. Both of these have unscented versions. They both smell fine to me, and they both have worked really, really well. The, the idea with these types of deodorants is that they are addressing the microbes that are creating the smell rather than that you're trying to cover it over or to stop you from sweating. And in terms of shaving, I have been uh, really happy with the uh, Dr. Bronner's Organic Shaving Soap. So this is very similar to that sugar soap in the pump, but it is thicker and it is richer, and I do think it does just as good of a job as the uh, commercial shaving products that I have used. Uh, it's not like using soap at all. It doesn't... Uh, it, I don't feel like it's uh, going to make me cut myself or that uh, it's, I think it's been a very nice product. And then in terms of bath stuff, you know, there's a store nearby me that has a variety of bath products. So sometimes I pick up items from there. But in terms of bubble bath, bubble bath tends to be really drying and really irritating to the skin. But I have been really kind of happy with the Honest Bubble Bath. And this is the uh, Calm version, which is a uh, a uh, lavender version, but they have several different uh, versions available, including I think an unscented one. And I have felt like this hasn't been irritating to my skin at all, and it's a nice little addition to my bath, and I think this would be good for anyone in the family. And then for laundry detergent, uh, for a very long time I have been using this BioClean Sport Laundry Liquid. And this has uh, Saccharomyces ferment in it, and I think that that has been really helpful in terms of uh, getting my laundry clean and making it feel good to me without having uh, any uh, artificial fragrances in it and without having any ingredients in it that are problematic. Uh, there are some times that if my, my clothing, particularly if it's stained, that I will switch to an unscented Tide. Uh, but this is a, a very nice product, and this, I think it's done a really nice job with my clothing on a regular basis. So this has been a really long video, and I have obviously lost all of my light, so thank you very much for watching all the way to the end of it. If there are any products that I mentioned today that you have tried, then please let me know what you think of them in the comments section. And also, if there are any products that you think that I should try that I haven't tried yet, then please let me know about that, because I am definitely open to new alternatives. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, then please go ahead and do that. And thank you very much for watching. Watching Coco and I love you very much. So goodbye.